Right, I can't remember what I said I was going to do last time, so I'm just going to click on this and hope that I said that I was going to do that one. Here's hoping. Ermengarde sat contentedly on the floor of Sarah's room, listening to her read from one of her storybooks. Also, I found out this isn't original. This game is based off an anime. I feel betrayed, honestly. I wasn't told this at all. I feel like the information was deliberately held back from me. And then he offered to take her away to his father's court, where he would make her his bride. Then the maiden adored the prince, whose company had charmed her for many hours, but she could not bear to leave her sisters without first telling him farewell, them farewell. She bade the prince to leave and return the next day to the place in the woods where they had met. Sarah did not read the words exactly as they were written, but put her own little touches upon the story to make it turn out the way that she preferred. Yeah. Alright, hang on. Let's remember who the storyteller is. It's the author. It was not quite the same as telling her own stories, but Ermengarde still seemed nervous at the idea that stories did not come from books at all. It was a first step. Slow child. Once he had gone, she rushed back to her home to take up her work at the wheel, planning to spin twice as fast to cover up for her absence. But when she sat down at the wheel, she was dismayed to find that her gold, magic gold thread had lost its brightness. Her heart beat fast and she wept bitterly, but she remembered her mother's warning and knew not what misfortune might now befall her. She was so afraid that she would be punished for what she had done that she ran away without telling anyone what happened, not even her beloved sisters. Right. So, not the most rational of people. She ran through the woods looking for her prince, but he was on horseback and long since gone. And while she ran, she did not watch where she was going, and so she tripped over a root and fell into the rushing river, disappearing in the swift current. Fuck me, this is a child's book, isn't it? She's just gonna die? Thus the misfortune was complete. What fucking books were they giving children? Oh my god, she died? Yeah, she drowned. Not quite. Sarah continued her story how the maiden was transformed into a golden water lily who sang in her sorrow, and how she was at last restored to life by the love of her sister. So she went through years of torment as a fucking water lily? How is this in any way redeeming? Oh god, I feel bad for even reading it. Hermengard sighed in contentment. When I hear stories in your voice, I can almost see them happening. You are much better than books. Sure. The way you smile scares me. Don't do that again. But what about the prince? Didn't he marry her in the end? He rode over the bridge by the river and heard her singing, but he didn't do anything to save her. It was her sisters who loved her enough to look for her when she was lost at... What's the moral of this story? I... Don't worry, because your siblings will love you more than your f potential boyfriend does and will save you when you're singing your sorrows as a fucking water lily. Surely the prince would have seen the water lily was golden and done something about it. I, uh, I thought princes were always heroes. Anyone could be a hero in the right circumstances. Great, well if I turn into a water lily I know who I'll be asking, but until then... I don't think I could. Hermengard looked around Sarah's room, decorated as it was with the best of at least three continents. Dependable England, refined France... Countries. Right. <laughs> I read France and went, hang on a sec. Uh, that doesn't seem right at all. Refined France and exotic India. <laughs> refined, yeah. That's how I describe France. Do you miss being in India, Sarah? Yes, of course. It was my home and I was happy there. And I had my house and my pets and my AR, and the skies were never foggy and grey like they are here in London. I loved living there. But I love it most of all because it where it is where my papa will be. Oh my god, she fucking loves her dad, doesn't she? I mean she does, I can understand why, but fucking loves him, doesn't she? Herman Guard saw Sarah's face suddenly change, a cloud seemed to pass over it and put out the light in her shining eyes. Nope, they're still shining like she's staring at four torches avidly shone in her eyes. She drew her breath in so sharply that it made funny, a funny, sad little sound. S funny and sad. She's going to grow up to be a bully. And then she shut her lips and held them tightly closed, as if she was determined either to do or not to do something. 
Have you a, a pain? There was a moment of silence in which Ermengarde worried about what m she might have spoken out of turn. But at last, Sarah answered, Yes, but it is not in my body. Not even going there, man. Her voice was low and somewhat unsteady. Do you love your father more than anything else in the world? Depends. Does cake still exist? Does lager still exist? Then no, no. Ermengarde's mouth fell open a little. She knew that it would not be correct for a respectable child at a select seminary to say that she did not adore her father, could not imagine being even so much as fond of him. I, I scarcely ever see him. In fact, she did her very best to avoid being left alone in his company for more than a few minutes. It was not a proper feeling for a daughter, perhaps. It was not clearly not something that Sarah would understand. Ermengarde was indeed greatly embarrassed. Ermengarde, you and I would get along. Don't worry. I understand your pain! That's, that's the best emo thing I can do. He was always in the library, reading things. There was a wealth of information in that statement if Sarah had been inclined to decipher it, but she was too preoccupied with her own feelings. <sighs> you know what the teacher does? So While Sarah is a good child, she is completely ununderstanding of other people's situations. I guess the internet makes me, like, in a more privileged position here, and back in Victorian London the internet wasn't something as readily available, but whatever. I love mine more than all the world ten times over. That is what my pain is. He has gone away. What? She put her head quietly down on her little huddled up knees and sat very still for a few minutes. Ermengarde had an idea that if she had been like any other girl, Sarah might suddenly have burst out sobbing and crying. But she did not. Her short black locks tumbled about her ears and she sat still. Then she spoke without lifting her head. I promise that I would bear it and I will. You have to bear things. Papa is a soldier, and think what soldiers bear. If there was a war, he would have to bear marching and thirstness, and perhaps deep wounds, and he would never say a word. Not what <laughs> I don't know about that. I think fucking shit would definitely be two words which would be regularly used. Ermengarde could only gaze at Sarah, but she felt that she was beginning to adore her. She was so wonderful and different from anyone else. Oh, God. <sighs> I'm 14 and this is deep. Present presently, Sarah lifted her face and shook back her black locks with a queer little smile. <laughs> I know the game's Yuri, but come on, how can a smile be that? I know it means weird and happy. If I go on talking and talking, I shall bear it better. You don't forget, but you bear it better. She likes the word bear, doesn't she? I would like to talk to you as much as you like, if it helps you. If I said that get away from me, would you run? hopefully. Girls, gather round if you please. We will be welcoming a special dance instructor who is visiting us from France. She will be leading you in exercises to increase your grace and posture. Go and change into your leotard style dancing costumes. <laughs> Why leotard style? Uh, whatever. She swept to her office and the girls clustered eagerly together. A special dance instructor. Do you suppose she might be from the Ballet La de l'Opera de Paris? I'm gonna go with fucking no. The Ballet of Opera. <sighs> You're poor, Ermengarde. That's your problem. You're poor. We're not good enough in this game! The Paris... The Paris Opera Ballet, of course. The absolute birthplace of romantic ballet. And they all go the way back to the Court of the Sun King. Oh. I am not so fond of ballet as you are. No one is fond of ballet as Jessie is. It is a sickness with her. I wonder if there really is a sickness that can make you like one thing or an or one person more than another. It's called an addictive personality, isn't it? And if there were, would anyone wish to be cured? Well, yes. If it borders on obsessive, yes. Such things you imagine. In any event, it might not be ballet. She is a special instructor, after all. Perhaps we will be permitted to practice social dances. Perhaps even the waltz. Alright, so we're not exactly going to be doing, like, the stanky leg, are we? My father says the waltz is shocking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me show you the finest dance that the kids are practicing across the land. It is called the grind. <laughs> oh, fucking mate, this game more, Yuri. Oh! Probably, probably not. Watching you attempt to perform it, no doubt would be... If we are allowed the waltz, I will be dancing with Jessie. Oh. Perhaps, perhaps. 
we had better go and get our costumes. Ermengarde is very sensible. It took only as little praise as that to make poor Miss St. John look pre pleased. Dancing lessons did not progress quite as anyone expected. Ugh. Lottie in the background by herself, as it fucking should be. I do not see how this can be described as dancing. It doesn't quite look like we're dancing, does it? It looks like we're practicing for some sort of weird rowing event. <laughs> Whilst Lottie's just being a cunt in the background. It is preparation for dancing. We are learning to stretch and relax our bodies so that we may move more beautifully. It's French. Sarah, is this the way things are usually done in France? I don't know. What the fuck? Just because I speak French doesn't mean that I... Uh, whatever. I've never asked Mariette whether she took dancing lessons. I want to walk on my hands. That's why you're at the back away from us all. Get away from us, freak. Leave your hands on the floor long enough and Ermengarde will trod on them for you. Ah, oh, Jesse, be careful. You are tickling me. The, the instructor said it was imperative that we rub deeply to warm our muscles. I swear, if there's a two-way mirror, the fucking instructor's watching us behind. To speak of muscle upon a lady is very unseemly. Your hands are very strong, Ermengarde. Oh, did I hurt you? No, not a bit. It feels nice. It is like... It is a little like having my hair brushed. It makes me feel like a cat being petted. Oh, God, don't say cat in front of Lottie. Yeah, see, exactly. You fucking started this, Sarah. <sighs> Cats don't dance. They dance at the court of the king of cat. That's not a real thing. How do they dance, Sarah? Do they stand on their hind leg? This conversation is bordering on ridiculous. Well, girls, cease chattering and get ready for your lessons. Yes, Miss Minchin. Oh, the less that happens, the better. Right. I think we need some belief, do you? Oh, dear. Um, so there's two here. I totally forgot what they are. We might just need to go all in just writing in our diary. Maybe mix it up with one tea party or two. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> to this week, I was a loner. I chose to go with nothing else at all. Oh, good. Three, four belief. Oh, that's not too bad. Five belief. Woo! And then most things are now ten. Are you well, ma petite? Yes, I am only feeling a little tired. The days have been growing warmer, but the air never feels the same way that it did in India. Yes, that's... That's what ventilation will do. I suppose Ermengarde is right, and that is the smell of London. Even if I cannot distinguish one scent above the others that would mean London, it must always be there. As am I. Bon courage, mademoiselle. I have something here which will brighten your day. It's a bit young for that, isn't it? Oh, a letter from... Yeah, no, that's what I thought it would be. A letter from Papa! Oh, merci, Mariette, merci beaucoup. She did not open it at once, but pressed the envelope to her chest. I am never coming back for you ever again! Stay here! I hope it says that. My papa has sent this. It has been in his hands. If a letter can come from mine, from his hands into mine, then we are never so apart. At last, she took out the paper and began to read. My dear little missus, here I am once again in Bombay. I have little to tell you from my adventures, for no sooner did I reach my home than I began thinking of you and putting pen to paper. Therefore, I have seen little since I left you other than ships, and you remember those. Sarah closed her eyes and let herself remember the voyage from India. The big ship, the Lascars, passing silently to and fro on it. The children playing about on the hot clock. There had been women on board, the wives of some young officers, who had invited Sarah to take tea with them and delighted her in making her speak her unusual thoughts. But most importantly, there had been her papa- Oh god, not this again. I felt it important to write to you at once, so that you would not worry about your old papa. All alone on the ocean, all is well. I am returned, and life here is remarkably unchanged in my absence. Now it is your duty to let me know all that has happened to you since I left you, and all the new friends you have made. <laughs> yeah, all one of them. The books you have read and the sights you have seen in London. <laughs> well, they have some cracking cobble roads. Do you remember Colonel G Grange and his little girl Isabel? In a year she will be old enough to, that she must leave for England as well. I am relying on your advice to tell her what she should expect in her schooling. Is she French? If not, she's fucked. Give my regards to Emily and any companions you she may have required, acquired, even not required. <laughs> be demanding of a dull, wouldn't it? You're always 
your loving papa. Well, she's not he's not dead yet, and I thought he would die at some point. Sarah held the letter in her hands, already beginning to imagine the many things she would write in response. I love you too, Papa. What a hero. <laughs> Five patience! Oh man, what a thing we need. This time it was Sarah who was curled up near a window when Ermengarde found her. Sarah, I, I wanted to ask you something if you're not too busy. No, you may not borrow my crayons. We've been through this. Only Ermengarde would realise that I might be busy when I'm sitting and thinking. No, it's just proper to fucking ask. You can always ask me things. She paused, then added. I can't always answer, though. I might not know. <laughs> you wouldn't be welcome on the internet. Is it true that Miss Minchin has you tea? Oh, it's not crayons. God damn it. Miss Minchin has you to tea with visitors just so you can speak French for them? Oh, well, I don't know if that is the only reason. I often do not say very much, and she still keeps me there for the rest of it. Some of her... Uh, Bugs Bunny. Some of her visitors are not very interested in French at all. Some of them prefer poetry and want me to tell them how they sell themselves saw India once upon a time. <laughs> oh, it's ghastly. There are so many people who aren't white. That's every adult said back then. Not everyone, but you get my meaning. But sometimes, yes, Miss Minchin has guests who speak French and wishes me to converse with them. You can really speak it then, not just a few words or a sentence you memorise. Ermengarde's respectful tone made Sarah feel a little off balance. She tucked up her feet, sat with her hands clasped around her knees. I can speak it because I have heard it all my life. You could speak it too if you had always heard it. Oh no, I couldn't. I could never speak it. This is, this is like the 19th century form of attention seeking. <laughs> Why not? Ermengarde shook her head so that the pigtails wobbled. You have heard me before. I am always like that. I can't just say words. They're so queer. I dare say that little French girls think the same about English, and if they try to learn the language for the first time, but if you had heard it as a child. But I did. My father, he speaks seven languages, or maybe eight. I f oh, you're just stupid then. There's that, that can't be helped, okay? Like, if you're stupid, you're stupid.